Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and this is the next video of my series where I teach you guys React Jazz from the beginning and I decided that this video is going to be the start of where I start transitioning from less beginner stuff to some more interesting stuff that you could do in React. So today I'm going to be talking about a library called Styled Components and the reason why I'm teaching you guys Styled Components before uh, some other built-in React functionalities is because I think that Styled Components is a very good library. It's something that will help you guys a lot and it emphasizes this property of React in which you can reuse different components and keep reusing them in order to not copy and paste code all the time. So basically Styled Components is a library which allows you to create different components and you can reuse them by adding CSS onto them. And basically it allows you to, for example, if you want to reuse a type of div and you always want to wrap everything around with this div, but you want to give it some properties in CSS, basically you can just create a function, comp a component uh, for that div and reuse it whenever you want. You'll probably see more in action when we start working with it. So first thing you need to do is import the the library. So in React, you can do it by basically going to your console and I'm going to open this a bit and writing npm install and the name of the library. So in our case, styled components. I've already installed this into this project, so I won't do that. You can also change it to yarn add styled components if you're using yarn, but in my case, I'm using npm. So when you finish installing it, basically you just go and create a folder called components and i already have mine right here and in our case i want to show you guys by creating a button so let's start a file and say um, buttons.js so inside of here first we need to import the library so import and we're going to give it a name of styled uh, actually style from styled components and it's already imported. And if we come down here and we want to create a button, for example, we can export, we give it a name, so button, and we make it equal to style dot button. And as you can see, when we click style dot, it appears a bunch of tags in, in HTML. This is basically where you define what you what HTML tag you want to create. In our case, we want to create a button. And this is the tricky part. When you write style.button, you need to press the, basically the, it's a quote, but I forgot the name right, right now. It's basically a pointed quote. And you go down here and inside of this is where you write all your CSS. I know you guys probably might find this confusing at first. And also it doesn't have autocomplete. Like if I go here and I write like everything I want to write in CSS, it will have autocomplete, but there's good reasons why this is actually better than writing on normal CSS. So if I come here and I want to create a button with width um, 200 pixels and height of like 50 pixels, I also want to create a background color, something simple so you guys can see of like red and uh, Basically, this is our button. I want to create a button that has a 200 pixel width and a 50 pixel height and a background color of red. I can come to my app.js and on top of here, or whatever you want, you can import and you open and close curly braces and you basically write here the name of the input that you want to, that you created down here. So I, I called it button. So I'm gonna call it button and from the path where your file is. So mine is in components slash buttons. And if I just come here into my render function and I write button, literally it will recognize as a component. And I can write here, this is a styled button. And if I refresh, you can see that the styled button appeared here. And you can reuse this a thousand times. It doesn't matter. It will always do the same thing. But this isn't even the part where style components become very useful. I'm going to show you something interesting. Basically, if I want to create three different buttons, right? One that is blue, one that is red, and one that is yellow. I can come here and create different variables that I'm going to use inside of CSS. So basically const color red equals to red. Then 
I'm going to change this to color blue. I forgot what, what colors I said. I'm going to use blue and green. Green. Okay. I can come here and I can just change this to button red, for example. And instead of here, since this is a we're using this type of quotes, you can use the JavaScript syntax where you simply write a uh, dollar sign and the uh, curly braces and you can write JavaScript variables inside of here. So I'm going to write color red and it will recognize. And if I come back, you can see that it, it's not working because now everything is called button. But if we change this to button red and I erase everything here and change this to button red and button red and I save this, you can see that it's still recognizing that the color is red. And why is this useful? Because you can create different versions of the same button. So button green, no, the button blue. And let me change this to color blue. And button green. And let me change this to color green. You can see that if we import the button blue and button green. So button blue and button green. We can just come here and write button blue, whatever, and button green. And it will recognize it will create three different buttons of different colors. And as you can see, this is really cool because it allows you to import to, to use JavaScript variables inside of here. One of the use cases that I use this the most is when I'm trying to use media queries. So I set, for example, variables to represent the size of the screen. And whenever I'm trying to create a media query, I just call the, whatever size I want to implement in that specific case. Also, in style components, you can pass props. But since this is not a video that I want to, I don't want it to be very long, I'm going to leave it to the next video where I'm going to be teaching you guys how to pass props on style components. Basically, this is a real, really cool thing you can do. Instead of creating three different uh, buttons, you can just create one of them and make change this directly from the component where you're writing by giving it props. So yeah, please stick around to see the next video and you guys will see what how to do this. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys are learning from this series. If you want to see more, please stick around to the next video and I see you guys next time.